Greetings again in the mighty victorious name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I love him. This very evening again, I want to thank God because of this opportunity that he has given us together to share the word of God and uh, I am excited in my spirit to bring hope to the hopeless today. And I want to talk about something that uh, once is missing in the people's lives. They can do anything. They can commit suicide. They can uh, uh, do damage. And their lives may be worthless. And this is hope. So I am here today by the grace of God because the Lord has commissioned me to make sure that at least uh, the lives that are listening to me will gain hope and the hope that does, does not disappoint. The hope in God. And I praise him for that. Now, I am, I am here that we may bring our heads together. And we walk together slowly that we may also see how to develop hope, how to gain hope when in the, in the, in the hurting world. The world is hurting. The world is, is crumbling things and lives down. But I want us to Work on hope that does not disappoint. The hope in the Lord. My names are Bishop Jeremiah Silla from Redeemed Gospel Church, Incorporated, standing in for the founder and the father of the Redeemed Gospel Church, Archbishop Dr. Arthur Kitonga. It's my joy again to bring you the celebration of the joy of the gospel today, this night. I want us to go to the word of God and we move slowly and we make sure that it becomes a blessing to you like it is to me. I am thanking God because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. People are not. Friends are not. Relatives are not. But I am standing the foundations that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The hope of glory is Jesus Christ. The hope of the world is Jesus Christ. And for that cause, let's read together in the, in the, in the, book, of the, the book of Job, uh, chapter 14. Verse 7 to 9. The Bible is so clear and it says this. For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its root may grow old in the earth and its, its stump may die, in the ground. Yet at the ascent, at the scent of water, it will burn and bring forth branches like a plant. Let me go to verse 10. But man dies and is laid away. He did, he breathes his last. And where he is. And verse 11. As water disappears from the sea, and a, a river becomes parched and it dries up. So man lies down and does not rise, does not rise till the heavens are no more. They will not awake nor be roused from their sleep. May we pray. Father, I thank you for the revelation of your word today. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God shall help us bring hope to the world. In the hurting world, I am praying that there will be hope. In the hurting world, there will be destiny. In the hurting world, there will be restoration. And that's why I came in this place, O oh Lord. I pray that you may bless your people and bless my life too. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I have, talked, I, have, I have talked about addressing the topic hope. 
Let me tell you, my viewer today, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the masses of God, among all the things I would hate to lose is to lose hope and more so hope in God. When people lose hope and they get hopeless, then life becomes meaningless and they can do anything. I have come over here today in the masses of God to, rest to restore what the kangas and the worms have eaten. And I pray that you may have hope in God and your hope may be restored. That's why I am here today. There are many things that we face every day in our lives, with our friends, with our relatives, with our extended families, and with our people. And we face challenges every day. And we have met on the road. We have met in the churches. We have met in the fields. In different countries, people losing hope. I was in the country of U.S. not, men, not long, long ago. And I was wondering whether I can pe pe find people that have lost hope in the streets. But you can't believe I found the people we call in Kenya, Chokoras, in um, the streets of America. Why? Because people have lost hope. And when people lose hope, then they can do anything. They can kill themselves. They can shoot themselves. They can destroy anything. They can destroy families. They can destroy meaningful lives. And therefore, I want today to entrust you with everlasting hope. The hope that is found in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I lived a life about 43 years ago. When I had no hope, I was sick. I was sickly from hospital to hospital. But until I met Jesus, my hope was restored and my life became different. And today the man that is talking to you had lost hope, had finished hope at all. And I had released myself to die. But I thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for Jesus, the hope of glory. When I met Jesus, my life was transformed. My soul was transformed. My body was healed. What was hopeless became awful. And today, I'm spreading hope where I am going. In this nation and the nations of the world. And I praise God because there is an everlasting hope in Jesus Christ. The Bible has said in the book of Job chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, mention it. It is said that there is hope for the tree that has been cut off to germinate and grow once again. Hallelujah. There is hope for a tree that has been cut off to grow, germinate, and spring forth and remove, I mean, and bring up buns and the tree is restored once again. Uh, today I'm here to talk to a hopeless soul. People that are hopeless People that have got no destiny. People that have destroyed their future. They don't know what to do next. People that are hopeless. Their homes are in tatters. Their families are destroyed. Their future has got no way. I am here today to tell you 
There is hope for a tree that has been cut off to spring forth back again and bring forth the fruits that birds can eat, that people can eat. Hallelujah. And I am here. And again, I hear the voice of the pastors and the church leaders. And that's where you find uh, that the Lord was asking uh, Ezekiah, can these bones, glory to God, grow to humanity or to human beings anymore? Can they have life and continue? And Ezekiah said, Lord, you knoweth, hallelujah. There are some situations that you come across. There are some situations that you are in and you don't know what to do. You don't know who to run for, run to, and you don't know who to share with. There are people who are, are wounded. They have passed through many things, challenges of life, situations of life. They are despairing, and you look at them, and they tell me, they tell you, brother, sister, what is remaining that I've not seen? What is remaining that I've not gone through? What is remaining? What can I say? Uh, it's all gone. It's all finished. It's all gone. There are people that have lost jobs. And especially this time of the COVID-19, people have lost jobs. Others have been chased away from houses and they have no place to stay. Others are getting some assistance from the, 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 to survive, they have shifted to smaller houses and the hope of the people is going down. The churches also, for us pastors, men for a long, long time, they have been closed down and we try to cultivate back the churches and you find the members are not coming to church anymore. Others have just become very, very small and a few and the churches that were small, you find the people have disappeared. And others are saying they cannot even come to church if there's no security. They think that coming to church is they are coming to conduct corona. Let me tell you the truth. There is hope in God. There is hope in the church. There is peace. And I tell you, pastors, I tell you, church leaders, and I tell you, Kenya, there is hope for a tree that has been cut off for it to germinate once more. And it grows to a big tree that the, 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 the birds build nests on them. That the birds eat fruits of them. The people eat fruits of them from the trees that have been cut. Hallelujah. There is hope for any tree that has been cut off. And I am here to announce to every person that is hopeless and feeling hopeless. They don't know where to go. They don't know who they talk. They should talk to. They don't know what to do. We look at the houses of God. They look and we look at everything and we say things are not normal. People have even left, and you look at everything and you wonder whom how, how many how many are going to remain. And you look at everything. I was talking to some pastors, and others that have even had even rented places. They have been actually been chased away. They don't know exactly where to go. And they, 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 the people have dispersed. And they look at everything and you find there is no hope. And you wonder whether you will continue. You wonder whether things will work out. I have got good news for you, pastor. I've got good news for you, church. I've got good news for you, members of the church. There is hope for a tree that has been cut off to germinate and grow once again. And actually you find birds coming to build nests on the same, same tree that was cut off. And you find people eating fruits from the same, same trees. And for that cause, I am here to say there is hope in God. There is hope in God. There is hope in your family. There is hope in what has been destroyed. There is hope in the church. There is hope in God. Brother, sister, don't give up. There is hope in God. Amen. Let me tell you, I've listened to many people. 
who wonder what will happen from now. They look at their, 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 their bank statement, they are no more. They look at their, their, their war jobs, are no more. The world is becoming hopeless. The situations are turning uh, hopeless. And the cases are becoming many, time and again. I am talking to people from different countries and different uh, parts of the world. And you listen to them. People are getting into a hopeless situation. And they don't know exactly who to turn to. They are trusted. They are leaders. They have been let down. The companies are sucking people day and night. You look at everything, even the airlines. I saw the, on the, in the telly the other day that the people that are operating airlines complaining and they say that they have gotten a lot of losses and they wonder whether they can recover. The hope of many, many airlines have gone down. I was there in my, my travel ancient's place. They look at everything and they say that everybody has to go home. We have got no place to get salaries for them. And let me tell you the truth. When there's hopelessness, when there's hopelessness, people give up hope, give up, give up their lives, give up what they have been doing. But I'm here to rekindle back again. Hope in God. Don't you stop trying. Try what God will enable you. Try that God may open a door. That tree that has been cut off, whatever has been cut off, don't throw it away. There is hope in it that it may grow back and restore to a tree, restore to a, to, to, to a, to a hopeful state. And I am praying today, I am praying for companies, I am praying for churches, I am praying for homes, I am praying for families. I, we have read and we have even listened to families in messes and actually uh, violence in the families growing and increasing time and again because of this state of COVID-19. But I tell you, don't kill your wife. Don't kill your, your son. Don't kill your daughter. Don't kill your father. Don't kill people. They have not caused this. And I'm here to tell you, don't destroy what you have built. Don't let the devil finish you. Don't hang yourself. There is hope for a tree that has been cut off that it may germinate and grow once again. Go back to what you have been doing. Go back to your business. Try in a small way. Try in a small way. Believe God. Do what you know what you, you are doing. Or you think of something else to do. All is not finished. The open God will sustain your brother. The hope in God will keep your sister. The, the people that are in families, we have gotten a lot, of, a lot of reports, even to do with our children, things that are happening. We are actually un, unable to believe. We are trying to run normal. Things are not working normally. People's hope is going down. But I'm here today to bring, to give you good news. There is hope for a tree that has been cut. There is hope, my sister. There is hope, my brother. There is hope, Kenya. There is hope, the world, for a tree that has been cut to germinate once, go, once again and restore. And you see nests, I mean, built by birds. And you see the, 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 the shoots spring up again on the cut tree. And I am here to give you hope, church. I am here to tell you pastors. I am here to tell you bishops that our God that we serve is able to restore us. There is hope in God. Listen to this. You may tell me, Bishop, you don't know exactly where I am. I may not know, but I know where your God is. I may not, I, I may not know where you are, but God knows where you are. Listen to me in the name of the Lord. Our God that we serve is a miracle working God. Our God that we serve is a miracle working God. Today I want to pray for families. I want to pray for churches. I will pray for every situation that has lost hope. And I am here. I'm telling you. I'm in the studio. 
We have to come over here in a very different way. We have to put on masks. We have to keep distances. That is okay. It has not been that way before, but I thank God because even as we take precautions, God is able to change our lives, transform our future. And I am praying and I am calling upon the church, church and ministers of the gospel, please I am calling upon you that let's wake up and pray that God that we serve may even quicken even the solution of this particular epidemic. And I pray and I know as long as we pray, God is going to use any means, scientific means, any medical means to bring a solution to the suffering common man. And I know one day life is coming back to normal. And that's why I'm saying that there is hope for a tree that has been cut off. Hallelujah. There is hope, my brother. There is hope, my sister. Don't throw your towels. There is hope in God. There's hope. Turn out to the person that is next to you and tell them that there's hope. There's hope in God. There's hope for your betterment. There's hope for, for, your, for your life to change. There's hope for a better job. There's hope for a better place for you to be. Don't finish life. I'm here to warn you, my brothers and sisters, don't finish life. And you, my fellow man, please don't actually turn your anger to your wife, to your children. Please, I persuade you in the masses of God. We are here. They're not the cause of this problem. This is a wild epidemic, and we are turning and trusting God. That's why we are actually, some of us, are staying put and making sure that we are praying for you. We are preaching to you. That we are preaching the gospel of hope. We are bringing life to you. That's why, and listen to me, you fewer, in the name of the Lord, God is bringing a solution in this particular case, in this particular situation. God is ailing the nations and there comes a great revival that will change the world. Listen to me. God is going to make a restoration. He has, he has allowed this because there's nothing that comes in the world. Either it's man-meant man or even cooked by from any source that God is not aware. But listen to me. God is going to make a new change in the lives of the people and is going to cook revival that will make people depend on God, turn to God, call upon God. And I tell you, it will be better than it was before. The revival that is coming is going to challenge the entire globe, just like COVID-19. I tell you, the revival that is coming, the healing that is coming in the world, it's going to surprise every person. It's going to surprise the governments of the world. It's going to surprise every leader of the church. It's going to surprise every leadership and challenge every situation that we have in the world. God is aware. God is in charge. And that's why his word is talking to us. And it is saying that there is hope for a tree that has been cut off and to spring back. To grow back, there is over a tree that has been cut off. Now to come back in a strong, mighty way. And I tell you, I am seeing the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Moving forward with the power. Revival coming all over. And the people getting healed. I am telling you, I am seeing bodies healed in Jesus' name. I am seeing lives healed in Jesus' name. I thank God because I'm a preacher of the gospel. And that this gospel of the kingdom, hallelujah, shall be preached to all the nations, not some nations, in all the nations. And then the end shall come. I am saying again, and I am seeing the, the, this particular gospel of the kingdom being preached to all the world of the nations. I am telling you to the whole world and then the end shall come. The gospel preaching is the last sign before Jesus comes back. And I am calling upon the church now to get to prayer, to get to fasting, to get to talking to God. Don't do, don't do sleep, don't do rest. Wake up and pray. And I am telling you church, 
telling you every brother, every sister, every man and woman, listen to me. There are things that are beyond our control. And whatever is beyond your control, let it not bother you. There are things that we have no control over. And there are things that we have no ability over. Don't you be troubled. Do what you can and what you can't. Leave it to God. Don't trouble yourself. Do what you can. And what you cannot, leave it to God. There are things that we cannot control. Like death. Let me tell you, we cannot control that. Today I can die. Somebody else can die. But let me tell you, that does not mean that God is not in church. There are many people that we have, we have ahead of us, who have gone ahead of us. It is our time. But all together, let me tell you, whatever you have got no control of, don't cook ways. Let God provide means. Let God provide ways. Let God help us. Let God perform a miracle over what you cannot do. I am here to encourage you. Every man that is watching me, every woman that is watching me, there's what you cannot do. Do what you can and let God do the rest. We have prayed for people. We have fasted with them. Like now, when COVID-19 has come to the world, I'm telling you, I have prayed for people here. I have prayed for people out of the country, in other countries, over the phone. God has healed them. God has helped them. And we, have, we as a nation, we have also lost some of the people. That does not mean that uh, God is not concerned. Yes, he is concerned. And always we have been sending our condolences. And especially we pastors who are dealing with lives every day. We love the flock. We love them. But let me tell you, pastor, trust God. Pray for people. And what you cannot do, leave it to God for him to do it. I am here for every other person. Don't kill yourself. Don't destroy what you have gathered. Don't destroy the lives of your, the lives of your wives. Don't destroy the lives of your children. Whatever you have got no control over, please leave it with God. Pray and leave it with God. I know I am talking to somebody now. I know in this I am talking to somebody. Whatever has been destroyed, believe God to restore it. There is hope for a tree that has been cut to germinate once again. There is hope for a tree that has been cut. I was talking to us in a family and they told me, Bishop, our son, our daughter, we don't know what to do. There's no hope. We don't know what to do. We look at everything and we say now, everything has gone to a mess. Let me tell you, parent, let me tell you, brother, sister, let me tell you, my relatives and friends, let me tell you, friends, in the Lord. Whatever you cannot do, leave it with God. Let God do it. Or what you may think is destroyed, God must be working on it, might be working on it. There are things that we may think they are finished, they are done. Let me tell you, sincerely, God has got a plan for everything that you see happening. And for that reason, today, I want to take a bit of time to pray for the hopelessness state that is there in families, hopelessness in the governments, hopelessness in our places of work, hopelessness in the churches, hopelessness in the streets, everywhere. I met somebody in a suit in town, and they stopped me just to ask me for 100 shillings that he may go home with it. A man that told me that he lost his job. I looked at everything and I said, what a state. It's a state that is pathetic. It's a state, if you find, it's a state that is painful to see a man actually borrowing and asking for a hundred shillings just to walk home with it. It's not a pleasing state, but listen to me. I have come over here as a man of God to pray and trust God 
Because there is hope for a tree that has been cut off to germinate once again. And grow and birds build nests on it. I believe God. I trust God for you. I trust God for Kenya. I trust God for our government. I trust God for the companies that have been messed up. I trust God for the hairlines that are in a mess. These are the hairlines that I've been using. And I am feeling challenged. I'm feeling pained when I see them struggling. I mean, hairlines that I've taken care of in different countries. I am pained because these are my people. But listen to me. I want to pray. I'll pray for companies and churches and homes. And I know God, the Almighty God, my Savior, will look at you with a merciful face and you'll make sure that things are fine. Allow me to pray. Let's pray in the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, raise up your hands before God with the mind and we join the screen and we pray. Father, in the name of the resurrected Jesus Christ, I want to release hope on the every cut job, every cut tree, every struggling business, every struggling church, every struggling family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release hope where there's no hope. I release healing in businesses, in churches, in homes, in the families, in Jesus' name, even in our government, in the name of Jesus, I release healing now upon our nation, the nations of the world, where these messengers listen to. In the name of Jesus, I release healing of the economy of the world, of the economy of the nation, in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing in the hospitals. Let there be healing in the families. In Jesus' my name, I release the power of God to heal, sustain, and let their hope cause the trees that have been cut off to germinate and grow once again in Jesus' my name. In the name of Jesus, I command there may be growth in every tree that has been cut off. In Jesus' my name, I release germination power. I release germination spirit over everything that has become hopeless. Give families hope. Give churches hope. Give, give, give governments hope. Give companies hope. Give every situation that is dead hope in Jesus' my name. I pray and believe there is flow of life in everything. In Jesus' my name I pray. Amen. God bless you. See you the coming Saturday at 10 p.m. at GBS. God bless you so much. And pray and keep on praying as we preach the gospel. Because it is power unto God. Amen and amen. Peace of God as you go to rest at night. Amen. Amen.